All right, people coming in. Uh, at this time, there's uh, events, uh, a Chinese community competition, you know, track and field. <laughs> uh, it's still going on. I, I'm sure it attracts some people there, uh, diverting some uh, audience. But uh, we have uh, people coming into this uh, burn talk. Um, first, uh, most of us uh, speak uh, Mandarin Chinese, and I believe 100% of us also speak English, and there should be no problem on that. And I, I would be really surprised if Mark suddenly speak Cantonese. <laughs> uh, he has uh, <laughs> probably won't happen today. <laughs> right, Mark Yuan, you can see the the last name and has some uh, Chinese heritage, I, I would guess. And um, he's a friend of uh, ours. You know, we live in Palato, and he's coming to our track, community track for some uh, uh, exercise. And then um, he told our, uh, you know, us his uh, story about his um, ancestors migrating from uh, Southern China to Hawaii. And then a few generations, you know, later, and he's coming to the continental US and to uh, be uh, like a normal person like us. You know, he has a regular job, you know, yeah, I believe uh, Mark has an MBA from uh, UCLA. True. Yep, and uh, just like a regular job, and as we do, and and he has uh, start running from uh, like here. Uh, after I start master running, forty plus, I follow some uh, you know coaches and basically coach myself. He's a self coach uh, runner. Uh, in the last few years, he actually uh, progressed. Uh, to a very high level uh, running and high to the extent to be a world record holder. You know, it's an age group, world record holder, track and field, four by 800 indoor. You know, look at that. And he's also a national championship champion, uh, USA champion for 10K, you know, 8K, 800 outdoor, and, uh, you know, uh, 1500 outdoor. So it's quite an achievement. I often tell uh, my, my friends the story um, about the Tintin. You, you remember the, the story of uh, Tintin? And he's an animated uh, character. Uh, in his story, there was a two police guy called the Tupang and Tupang. And they, they, they are driving a, a Jeep inside a, a desert. And then there was a princess driving a very you know advanced car passing through, you know, uh, their jeep and then one of the twin brother just, just step out of the jeep and fall to the ground you know while the jeep is running and his other twin brother asked uh, two pound why do you want to why did why did you step out you know our car is still driving and that guy come up and said you know i saw the car passing me by so fast i thought our car is not moving and I had the same feeling when uh, Mark passing me by in the track number one, you know, when I go uh, my uh, long run and MP training on the track and the Mark passed me by like, um, like, uh, like a bullet train. And I was thinking I must be not running. <laughs> and then I was checking my leg and checking my, my watch and uh, he's so fast. <laughs> and then I'm thinking, you know, how can how can he become so fast? I'm I'm keeping keep finding, you know, trying to find something. Uh, I'm more, I'm better than Mark. And then one day I'm thinking I will have one thing better than Mark. You know, uh, Mark has never run a Boston Marathon. Yeah, he's not <laughs> even qualified. He's not even qualified. So, <laughs> so I feel happier. And then thinking about uh, his achievement, I feel uh, depressed. And then I want to bring more people, you know, to depressed with me, you know, uh, facing a, a champion, you know, you have to be depressed. All right, just kidding. And now uh, I'm going to uh, leave, uh, you know, uh, the talk to our distinguished guest, Mark, and he's going to share his uh, stories, you know, his uh, training methodology and uh, his thoughts. And then we welcome uh, questions um, uh, in the chatting channel and also, um, uh, after the talk, uh, after he's, uh, you know, he's uh, covered his uh, materials. All right, I'm going to stop share, Mark, and it's all yours. Yeah, sounds good. I will, I will share my screen now. I can see it. 
Okay, perfect. Um, and Mark, when do you plan to uh, qualify for Boston? Uh -huh. <laughs> So, so, uh, so a couple, a couple things is that, uh, uh, Lee actually has something. He actually had, does have something that I do not have, which is a lot of endurance. Uh, we will, we'll talk about this later in, in the presentation, but, um, my speed is pretty good, but, um, my endurance is my weak point. Um, but Lee is an endurance machine. So actually you do have something that I don't have, you know, we are, we are fairly complimentary and, you know, we're, <laughs> we're kind of partners in, in that respect. No, talking about the one, one hour, 13 minutes for your, so let's say rock and roll. You well, know, at what I, you age, that's uh, true. true. You can, you can I, buy a coffee and uh, finish your coffee and, uh, you know, sit there and I start, I, I just uh, show up in finish. <laughs> half, finish. half marathon is one thing. Uh, full marathon is, is, is another. <laughs> can All right. can you see my, can you see my screen? Yes. Full screen. Yes. Okay, great. So, Hey, first of all, um, thank you very much to everyone for joining. I, um, uh, I'm very honored, uh, to be asked to give this talk. You know, I, I looked at the participant list and I see a lot of the names that I recognize. So I'm just, uh, I'm very happy, um, because what I wanted to start out to say is that uh, I'll, I'll try and monitor the time because I'm, I'm trying to focus on some of the tidbit, running tidbits, you know, that have worked for me that, that maybe are transferable to other people. But, but I also think the introductory story is pretty good, which is that um, my friend told, you know, a couple of years ago, my friend told me, you know, so, so sorry, let me start over is a, uh, you know, in, during the school year, it's hard to run on a high school track because the, the school will open around eight o'clock and, you know, maybe your workout isn't done and someone will come out and say, oh, you know, you, you have to stop because school is starting. So my friend told me, oh, there's this track in Palo Alto called Coverly. And, you know, it's not a high school, it's a community track. So, you know, it's always open. You don't have to, you're not going to, you don't have to finish at a certain time. So I said, oh, great. So, so I, uh, I went one day <laughs> and that's when I met the, the coffee group. I didn't realize that the coffee group kind of owns the, or, you know, wrong words, but, uh, you know, that's the home track for the coffee group. So what that means is, uh, you know, I showed up and I saw, you know, older men and women in yellow Boston Marathon you know, long sleeve shirts, doing drills, running intervals, running tempo. And, you know, usually when I go to the track, I'm the only one there. Um, so I was like, wow, you know, this is, this is really, this is really interesting. What's going on here? You know, so I, um, I learned a little bit more about the group and I love the motivation. And as Lee said, I love the friendships, you know, we'll kind of get into that a little bit more as we go through the slides but uh you know i think it it was a you know in my mind it's a it's a great story because i think um you know i i consider all of them my friends you know i see them, most of them whatever two three times a week now and it's uh you know it's 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 fun it's a it's, it's a lot of it's a lot of fun yeah by the way the coffee group is uh burns uh, palo alto mountain view uh region uh local local group so we call it, uh, in Chinese, we call it the coffee group because well, running has been a part of life. We don't talk about running much. <laughs> we just talk about coffee <laughs> and dogs. <laughs> Thank Go you ahead. for sharing. Okay, so so where I'm going is, you know, like, I think part of the good story is that, you know, when you meet, like, I think all of us have met a lot of runners, you know, whatever, all over the country, all over the world, you know, at different races, you know, what have you. And... I would, you know, I'm inclined to say that more often than not, running people are tend to be kind of the same character. Like they, they tend to be very nice. They tend to be very helpful. Uh, you know, and, and, you know, I, I personally just, I find interest in, in sitting down and learning about, you know, the stories of different runners, what they're trying to, what they're trying to do, what their approach is. Um, I, I just, 
personally just enjoy stuff like that. And, you know, the theme really of this talk is I, I was thinking that I would share the same of myself with, with you in, in hoping that it interests you and, and kind of seeing where it goes. So I think, you know, the, uh, the other thing is that I think in this, you know, the sport is really about progress and about just, you know, getting ourselves better. And sometimes, you know, to be quite candid, the only way to do that is to run or talk to people that, you know, might be a little bit better than you because maybe they just have whatever they, they, they just do a little bit more. Maybe they have a little bit more experience or, you know, they do a b and c just a little bit better than you and all of us can kind of learn from that and and get takeaways and, and make ourselves better so um the things i wanted to focus on in the talk today were the bullets at the bottom if you can see my screen which is running groups and why we're doing this um i'll share some running fundamentals that that work for me that you know maybe if if some of you aren't really you know thinking about in that same way Maybe you can think about it that way and, and see if it works for you. Um, I do have this objective uh, thing called the VDOT tables, which I think Lee also uses, but uh, you know, those are a great way to have, those are a great way to kind of structure some of your training um, and have conversations with your coach. So I'll, I'll, I'll share you, I'll share with you how I use them and, how I've used them with my athletes and, you know, we'll, we'll kind of go from there. Um, and, you know, if, if you guys are okay, let's, um, let's save all the questions for the end. I'm happy, you know, I don't have a hard stop. I'm happy to stay on. I don't know if Lee does, but I'm happy to stay on and, and, and go with questions, but um, let's, if you don't mind, let's go through the slides first and then I'm happy sure. to take in, any question at the end. Sure. We scheduled the uh, 90 minutes. I, I think you can use uh, about one hour, you know, also. Sounds good. Okay, cool. So um, here's here, here's the flow of the slides. Um, I'll tell you how I got into doing this. You know, I'll give you my thoughts on why we're running, like why we're doing all this stuff. Let's talk about the growth path of runners and marathoners. Um, I'll give you some initial takeaways on how I, you know, just, um, you know, how I've kind of adjusted my life to training. Um, then we can kind of move into more serious stuff like running for time. Um, I'll, I'll, I can introduce the VDOT tables, the concepts and explain how I use them. I have a couple slides with, uh, some time examples, get, you know, give some, you know, give some kind of case studies, if you will, about how some people might be stuck. We can talk about how the tables could help you and your coach, um, you know, maybe think about training differently if you're not already doing it that, that same way. Um, and then, you know, I, ideally what we're trying to do as we, you know, just go through all this stuff is, you know, kind of illustrate that the process of running, I think is different for everybody. And again, what you, what you kind of need to do as a person or as a runner is, you know, work, you either figure it out with yourself or work with your coach to figure it out for yourself. And, you know, that's, if you can figure that, if you can figure that out and, you know, you choose to go places and then that's maybe that's your path to really moving yourself forward and, and, and making that progress. Hey, Mark, there's uh, one thing that we have in common that uh, will really relate to the audience. And this group is uh, uh, not very young, you know, put this way. And we are similar age, you know, forties, uh, we started running and the fifties, there are some runners even in sixties. So if yep. you can, you know, mention uh, here and there about the, uh, you know, the age group kind of uh, impact and how, it, you know, in, in the running, that would be a uh, very relating, you know, to that, our experience. That's a, that's a fantastic point because Lee, I think both you and I share that, um, you know, good things can come, you know, at, uh, you know, whatever, our age, like forties, fifties, even sixties, you know, the, the fine print is that it just, you know, we're not 20. So it, it just, it's possible, but it takes a little bit longer. And that's, you know, I think that's where we all just have to kind of recognize where we are in our lives and maybe have that patience. But if, you know, but if you can, if you can have that patience, you can still set the bar high and you can dream the dream and you can make great things possible. Right. Yeah. Especially how to stay injury free. You know, you can uh, build that into your talk. Absolutely. Oh, happy to do that. Happy to do that. <laughs> 
Okay, so I'm gonna here. I'm gonna advance here. Go ahead. Uh, so here, my own story, which I'm just gonna gonna glance over a little bit, is that. So I started running in elementary school, mostly like I didn't know what it was, but they had this they had this program where, like you you ran around the grass at lunchtime and you got a ribbon and you know like if you did whatever thirty laps in whatever four weeks or something like that, like you got a a, a blue ribbon. And if you did more, you got a green ribbon, like it was that sort of thing. And I was, you know, I, I looked at all the people getting all the stuff and I was like, you know, these people don't really seem that special to me. I was like, you know, if they could do it, maybe I can do it too. So I, I kind of started trying it and, you know, for whatever reason, I kind of, you know, never really stopped. So I, uh, I ran in high school and I ran in college. I went to UC San Diego, um, nothing really to write home about you know i had some reasonable times but uh, i mean i was i was completely average you know far from far from the best um i took a break in my 30s like you know i was mostly working and i had some other stuff going on so i i jogged a little bit but i i really didn't race and you know but the, as as lee said like in the 40s you know i i had my kids you know i i had a job like you know my time was crunched things were hard you know, like life wasn't really in what I, in what I had envisioned it to be kind of before. And I was, I was just like, you know what, like, I'm, I'm gonna go back and start running again. Like, um, my friend told me, Hey, uh, like after I got laid off from this job, my, my friend told me, Hey, let's go join a, a master's running team. And, and let's, let's go be competitive again. And I was like, fine. You know, I'm, you know, I was, I was kind of at a low point in my life and I was like, fine, let's do it. I, I, you know, there was really no reason that I had to say no. So we did it and it just turned out to be this amazing thing. Like it's, uh, I'll get to this in a second, but like I made a lot more friends, you know, there was, you know, there, there were, there were other people that were competitive with, like the bonding was great. The, com the camaraderie was great. Like it just, you know, it was really like a kind of a second win in my life that I just, I just really enjoyed. Um, so then, you know, so I did cross country, uh, with West Valley, which is a team sport for, you know, whatever, five years. And then I decided, okay, you know, I, my own ambitions really are to run on track and, you know, there's not a lot of people who are whatever, 50 years old that, you know, really want to do something like that. So that's kind of more of a, of an individual, individual sport, but I was like, you know what, you know, I have the fitness, you know, I, I want to do this. I'm just going to, I'm just going to train and I'm just going to see where it goes. So, um, I, you know, I, COVID kind of helped to be honest with you, cause I could train a little bit more and I could kind of skate away from work a little bit. Um, but you know, one of the other, one of the other themes of this talk is that I, I feel like I made a lot of progress and if I can help any of you on the call in sharing what worked for me, maybe if it works for you as well then i take a lot of satisfaction out of something like that here so i'm gonna keep going uh if this thing will advance once okay cool so let's step back and and let's do real quick like why are we doing this um and i'm gonna glance over this uh but it's but it's still an important slide is you know, a lot of it, a lot of it's because we find peace, we find time away from real life. You know, it's not just the fitness, you know, we like the running, you know, it's like, you know, it's, it's fun to do it. Um, you know, but a lot of times when we're, when we're running, like, and, and we're running, you know, maybe for, with certain objectives in mind or certain goals, like we find that we can be a certain person when we're running that that is different than we're just you know a person in our family life or just a, fit, a person on the street um you know you can set a goal you can pursue your dreams you can believe in yourself and you know a lot of times it's a lot easier to accomplish all that when you're running versus you know when you're doing a career or, you know doing family stuff or just you know being kind of like an, an, an everyday person if you will so my experience with west valley is i you know I guess I dare, dare I say it, it's, it's similar to, you know, when we, when we, when we go out to Cubbly, you know, we try, you know, I, I think, uh, I think the coffee group, you know, everyone's happy to be there saying hello to everyone, even with burn, like it, you know, on some of the long runs on the weekends, you know, every, you know, like everyone's happy, 
it's a, it's a good time. You get your workout done. There's food afterwards, you know, there's social time. It's not just the workout. It's kind of like being, it's being part of a group. And, you know, if, if I'm, if I'm right in saying that, then what that means is that it feels good. You know, you, you do it. It's, you know, there, there's kind of like this innate satisfaction in, in doing it. It's not so much like, hey, you know, I should be running faster or whatever. Like, you know, there's other important, there's other important and social aspects there. There's, you know, hey, I'm just, I'm part of something that's really, you know, just really cool and makes me feel good. Like I just, you know, these are my friends. It's just something that is, uh, is really fun. You know, I, the other thing I'll say, and this goes back to what Lee said about not getting injured is, you know, this, when, if you're running seriously, there can be really, really emotional lows in this sport. Uh, but the highs can also be very, very high. So here, I'm going to keep going because I just don't want to run out of time. Uh, quotes from the greats. I, I want to spend just a minute on this because I, I love some of these quotes. And I think that um, maybe others will as well. So Ryan Hall, <clears throat> uh, 204 Boston Marathoner, Olympic Marathoner. I'm just going to read it. And then I'm going to tell you what I think about it is that he says, when I'm out there running, it's on the road, like, you know, hard workout, it's heart, mind, body, and soul. That's what I love most about running. It's all of you out there on the road. And when I'm at my best, I'm accessing all aspects of myself and pouring it out there on the course. What that means to me is that he's fully engaged in the workout. Like there's, you know, some hard workout, whatever intervals or tempo. And he's like, look, I, I want to be here. I, you know, I'm in, you know, maybe I'm, maybe there's a little bit of suffering involved or whatever, but I want to do this. Like my, my head is in it. Um, I want to make the progress. I just, you know, this is something I want to do. Like he's locked in is, is kind of how I interpret that quote. The other one uh, from Grant Fisher, who's a Olympian uh, in the last couple of years, you know, feeling of being part of something and playing a role in a greater success is addicting. And that, you know, that goes back to one of the themes that I wanted to try and flesh out, which is the running groups and the why. It's like, hey, you know, the running is great. The fitness is great. You know, but when you're part of a group, the friendships and feeling like we're part of something, you know, almost bigger than ourselves, or, you know, when you're helping someone else and you can help them achieve a breakthrough. That's just, you know, that's just really cool. That's just, I just find that really cool. Um, so I just, I wanted to highlight that because um, I think that people feel that, I mean, this is an Olympian saying it, you know, I've said it, there's probably other people, maybe even, you know, dare I say like hob hobby joggers that have said it. Like when, when people across all different levels are saying the same thing, you know, there's, there's a little bit of consistency there and there's, there's a little bit of takeaway. So I just wanted to highlight that because I think, I think it's important is that it's not just the fitness, like we're all doing it because we're, we're part of like a fun group, you know, whatever the group is. And if it, you know, if there's a lot that we can all take away from that and, and that makes us better, then that's part of why we're doing this. So, okay. Hey, I'm, uh, Okay, let's. So now I'm going to talk about the growth path of marathoners. I mean, this is not rocket science. Here is, you know, if you're if you're new to the sport, it's like, hey, I'm I'm you know, this is you know, this is kind of cool. I'm trying to finish a race, you know. Then you finish a race. Maybe it's like a local marathon or like a CIM or something like that. Then it's like, oh, you know, that was kind of fun. I had a good time. All my friends were there. I did it. We all did it together. I felt great at the end. Um, you know, now I want to go do you know, maybe I'll, maybe I'll go do like the six stars or something like, you know, I may, maybe this can be, maybe this can be something, something bigger, you know, there's bigger things out there. Maybe I should be the person to do that. Um, then after that, it's like, oh, you know, part of the six stars is I gotta, I gotta qualify for Boston, you know, shoot. That means, uh, I have to run for time, um, which we'll get into a little bit later, but, um, you know, that's, that's, you know, just kind of being, as, as we go down the growth per, growth curve, that's that's just part of something that that some people think about. Then there's racing others, which I won't talk about because um, that's more like more like high level. But I just wanted to highlight the the growth path of, of marathoners as you kind of go from, you know, call it novice or starter on to more advanced.
So Lee, uh, tell me if I'm going too quickly. No, very good. And on this um, motivation and uh, the desire to run, I just uh, listened to a, a podcast of the sapiens, uh, sapiens of uh, history of uh, humankind. They mentioned that uh, humans 9,000 years ago, before we transitioned to agriculture, we are hunter and collector. So in our genes, we are basically hunter and collector. You know, everybody there at that time are like marathoners. That uh, brings uh, us the intrinsic joy, you know, to uh, to hunt, to run, and uh, to uh, to know the nature, and to work together in a tribe. So that's our basic instinct, at least from the podcast that uh, they have this kind of a point of view. It's something uh, interesting to uh, to add here. Makes sense. Okay, I'm gonna keep going because I, I wanna spend some time on this slide and a couple other ones. So let's pause for some, for some quick takeaways that any of us can, can get, even if we're not running for time. In my mind, uh, I'm looking at the first bullet here, is that running is about patterns and routines. So what that means is that if you're adjusting your life to accommodate your runs, then you're a runner. What that means is that, you know, hey, there's a little bit of data science that kind of goes into like if you if you if you want all of your runs to be the best that they can be there's a little bit of data science that goes into the process meaning hey you know like i you know i had a stomach cramp on tuesday and thursday and those were the days that i drink orange juice at breakfast with my family you know so hmm you know maybe Maybe orange juice isn't really conducive to me for for a good workout, you know. And that's that's you know that's something you have to think about after you know after the run if you have, you know, whatever stomach cramp or something, and and you know kind of fix it. Same thing with like you know the diet or you know eating. It's like hey, um, I find you know if you find that you run better, for example an hour or 90 minutes after you run versus like 30 minutes, you know, then you have to bake that in. Or it's like, hey, you know, this, whenever I use these socks that are super thick, I get this black toe or like a blister, you know, but I, when, I, when I use the thinner socks, all is good. Um, again, like, you know, as you, after you do all these runs, as you just gather the data, you know, just, just, take take all the bad you know identify all the all the bad items you know and then say like all right well you know i'm, I'm not gonna i'm not gonna drink orange juice anymore before the run I'll, I'll drink orange juice after the run you know i'm gonna plan my meals better so that i can you know get a better workout out of myself i'm, I'm gonna wear thinner socks you know maybe i'll sleep better whatever like you know all these things are different for for everybody but you know the if you're having if you're having issues or you don't feel like you're getting the best out of yourself, then, you know, maybe the best way to solve it is just to keep a journal, you know, just write down, you know, whatever, what you had, what you had for dinner the night before, how many hours you slept, you know, if you run in the morning, what the workout was, what time you started, like the routine thing is your body, like at least my body wants to run at the same time every day. Uh, so the, the way I try and get my best workouts out of myself is just to stick with the routine, uh, you know, run at approximately the same time every day, whether it's an easy run or whether it's a hard run um, and just try and flesh that out. And um, I mean, there's other things I do too. Like I happen to be allergic to milk, so I just don't drink it. Um, you know, but again, if you have to make diet fixes or do other things like, you know, wear thin socks, what have you, um, you know, if you're trying to get the best out of yourself, then, you know, that's sometimes that's, that's just what you need to do. Uh, the other thing I'll say is that we'll get into this later when I talk about uh, coaching and how I coach myself, but, you know, running should really be about making baby steps. Like don't try and run, you know, doing like an eight mile long run one, one week. And then the next week do like 15, like that's, that's a, that's a huge leap. The, the best training really is to take a, a long progression of very, very small baby steps and just make very, you know, incremental, incremental progress with, with whatever, every week, every two weeks, what have you. Um, this goes back to the injury part. That's the best way to not get hurt. It's just to make 
uh, a very, very long series of small changes to your body, to your mind, you know, to, to how you approach this. And, you know, that's, that's one of the things that's worked for me. I mean, I, I have been hurt in my, in my master's career. It's not something I particularly enjoyed, but you know, again, I'm just trying to share my experience with you so that uh, if, if any of you can get takeaways from it, then then it would be a good thing. OK, here's sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. Sorry to bother you. There's a um, there's a dialogue window on the screen uh, on the right bottom. Yeah. Uh, if you can remove that, people can. I'm with you. How do I. Uh, how do I get rid of this thing? Uh, exit to the um, uh, presentation mode and come back, maybe. Okay, sorry. Is there, yeah, and do it again and then presentation again. It'll probably go away. Okay. All right, good. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Okay, cool. And then here, let me uh, take this off too. Okay, great. Hey, thanks for the thanks for the help. Um, this this middle section I want to spend some time on because I I think uh, I think it's really helped me is so when I'm running intervals or tempo, I try not to check my like when I try not to check my watch too much. Like when I'm out there, like you know if I'm running like example like four by eight hundred at you know whatever pace. What I'm trying to do when I'm doing that workout is I'm trying to develop a feel for the pace. You know, it's like, hey, again, I coach myself, so I assign, the, you know, myself the paces. But, let, you know, let's say it's whatever, 80 seconds. Like, I want to I train my body to go out there on the track and run 80, exactly 80 seconds. I want to come to the 240 seconds. I want to finish the 400 meter at, at 80 seconds. I want to I want to run exactly that pace. So what I'm where where I'm going is that I only use my watch to kind of validate the feel or the instinct that I'm trying to build. Like ideally, what I'm trying to do is I internalize that feel of hey, how am I breathing? How are my arms moving? How are my legs moving? How does it how does it feel when I'm running that particular speed on the track? That's what I'm trying to do. Is I'm I'm trying to develop that feel, uh, you know. And I, I'll I'll use the watch to check myself, you know. Like maybe I'll I'll try and maybe I'll run it and won't check my watch for like whatever 100 meters, and I'll say okay, I think this is the feel, and then I'll check my watch to to see if I'm if I'm going through, and I'll I'll check to see if my body is, is kind of, you know, tracking that consistently. Um, that's, that's what I try to do. And we'll get into this more later in, in the talk. But the reason why is that when you have that feel like, you know, we're trying to build it in the interval and then we're trying to dump it into the tempo, you know, so there's, there's a reason why I'm trying to develop that feel is, is one is because I'm trying to establish efficiency. Two is, you know, I want to be able to, to run that pace without, you know, checking my watch, like whatever, at every 10 seconds, like I, that's the, that's the internal clock that I'm trying to build when I, when I do all this stuff. The other thing is, you know, if it's, if the, if you're kind of at that point where the breathing is borderline hard, what I'm trying to do out there is I'm trying to stay relaxed. I'm trying to say like, okay, look, I'm right at the edge of call it uncomf uncomfortable, uncomfortableness or an uncomfortable ability. And I, I, when you feel that, that's when you know that that's probably right where you should be training. And, you know, I think as an athlete, what I try and do there is I just try and stay relaxed. It's like maybe borderline, like just a touch and comfortable, but I, you want it to be a touch and comfortable because that's where you should be training and that's where you're going to make progress. And the only way that you're going to make progress is if you're relaxed. Like if you tense up, you know, if you try and, you know, whatever grit your teeth or what have you you know you, your body's not going to respond to the workout in, in the way that it should so try and try and stay relaxed the other thing i'll say is that um you know the mental side is there's a mental side to running which i think is a big side which is knowing and controlling yourself 
patience at the right time and intensity at the right time. Um, and where I'm, where I'm going with that, where I'm going with that is that, um, you know, like when we get into racing, which, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that more in the talk, but like, you know, part of racing is being patient. It's, it's just, you know, it's distance running is about, excuse me, distance running is about control. It's not just, you know, we can all go faster in the workouts, you know, than, than we're running the workouts at, but the, we, the reason we do the workouts is we're trying to establish the strength. We're trying to establish the, the discipline and the control of running at that particular speed. And that's going to be the takeaway from the workout. You know, as, as Lee said, don't look too far ahead. Like it's just a, it's just a data point in, in the longer term path. Um, and the other thing is, you know, Hey, try not to get hurt. You know, like the one thing I would, I would probably suggest everyone is like, know when the workout is done. And like, when I look myself in that, in the mirror and I, I tell myself that what that means is, Hey, when my form really breaks down or I just feel completely cooked, you know, maybe I gave myself like too hard of a workout that day or whatever, you know, then you're done. Like I would, I would, I think what we all, you know, I think, well, let me step back. What, what's helped me is that I would rather underachieve in one particular workout and live to see another day, live to see another week, as opposed to, you know, if my coach who maybe didn't know hundred percent of what was going on in my body, if he gave me a workout that was a little bit too hard and I did all the workout, you know, but I put my shelf on, put myself on the shelf for a week. Like it's much better, you know, to say, Hey, coach, you, you asked me to do 10 reps. I only did nine. You know, I'm, I'm just, I'm just not feeling it. I'm done. Like in my view, that's, that's a much, that's a much better answer as opposed to like, I did all 10 and now like I need to go home and like, you know, take an ice bath because I'm just beaten up. I, you know, I, I think under, you know, under, under training tends to be better than overtraining has, has been my experience. And Lee, I don't know if you want to add any thoughts onto that. Absolutely. Uh, actually, I asked my athlete to um, have the freedom to abort without, uh, you know, I think being you know, first. It's always, um, uh, they want to change. They can always change to the more conservative side. I, I fully agree with you. Good. Okay. I'm just looking at the clock. I'm, I'm trying to move, trying to move through this here. Okay. Uh, so quick slide, these moments happen. Hey, you know, like I've, I've done a couple of marathons. I'm having a great time, but now I have to qualify for Boston. Hmm, how am I going to do that? Oh, I, you know, I want to run, I want to run Santa Rosa. I want to be top hundred in the race. Shoot. I'm going to have to run the specific time. How am I going to do that? You know, like, or I want a PR, you know, that's, that's a lot of motivation. That's a lot of effort. How am I going to do that? If you've had any of these thoughts, you know, Hey, that means you care. That means you're moving up the growth path. And this is the slide that, that I showed earlier. And by the way, these slides, you know, hopefully they're, they're published. So you don't, no one has to take notes. Okay. So how do we, when, when you're running for time, uh, there's a tool that I use called the V dot tables and in, in short, what that means is that um, these are the, uh, the VO2 max at different distances um, at different levels. So the, the, the thing I want to say before I actually show you the table is, is one, is that there's three things here. One, I think everyone should be training at their current ability. Like, don't just say like, hey, I, I want to go run you know, whatever, a two hour marathon. So I'm going to go train at a two hour pace. It, you know, running doesn't work that way. Whatever your, whatever your ability is today is what you should be training at. Second, um, and I, I've marked this on the slide, so you don't need to remember it, is that when you see the table, remember that if you're on a certain level and you're, you're, you're extending the distance on that level, that's easier. The much harder thing is to say, hey, I'm at a certain level at a certain distance and I'm trying to go down two levels. That's a lot harder. It, it's, it's possible, but it takes a lot more training time. Um, the last thing I'll say, which is all, you know, is something that we can all maybe take away from is that for the marathoners here is that the, one of the most important ways that I use the tables is, Hey, two weeks before the marathon, 
if I'm running a 10 mile tempo, which is, you know, which is the same pace as the 15 K box, like 15 K is like 9.3 miles or something like that. Like whatever pace you're running that 10 T on probably two weeks before your marathon, you can use that to set you and your coach can use that to set the marathon pace. Um, so that's, you don't have to, you know, I mean, you have to adjust for the course, like, you know, you could, you, you know, you can go straight off the tables for a flat and fast course like Chicago or, or Berlin, you know, but if it's New York or, or Boston, it, you know, there's probably like a course adjustment that needs to take place, you know, or if it's, if it's a hot day, maybe, maybe you need to make an adjustment for that. But where I'm going is that here's how I use the tables is one is I, I use them to, to look at you know, where the current ability is and where everyone should be training at. Second is I, I look down to see kind of like how easy it's going to be to extend my speed or either gain speed. Um, or I use them to, to, um, to set the marathon pace after someone does the 10 T at the end of the cycle. So here, let's look at some, some case studies here. So we have a four hour marathoner example. I don't know if you can see my cursor on the left. Um, and then three hour marathoner example on, on, um, on the right. And, uh, you know, we can, we can publish the full tables after the call is done. You don't, no one needs to write all this down. Um, you know, I think they go down to like two hour marathon pace. So if, if Kinchobi is on the call, then, you know, we can, we can get his stuff figured out too. You know, he doesn't need to take any notes, but where I'm going is here, let's walk through this. Is that, so if someone ran four ten. Let's say, let's say, you know, I, 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 actually, let me start over. Common situation is someone says, hey, my last three marathons were all around the same time. You know, why, why is that? All right, let's talk about that. Let's, let's try and work, you know, let's try and figure that out. So if someone ran 410, you know, their last 10, you know, which is 933 pace, their last 10 T was probably at, at nine Oh three pace. If it was run two hours, you know, two, sorry, two weeks before. And it was, you know, all things equal, meaning, you know, course adjustment, you know, hot day, the person didn't have a bad day, that sort of thing. Uh, for the three hour example, you know, for a three thirty two person, eight Oh eight Oh six marathon, you know, their, their last 10 T was probably somewhere around seven thirty seven. Uh, you know, so then after you run the marathon, Hey, you know, we take some recovery. Now your, your current ability is in, is in the orange, not the gold, but the orange, you know, you can only do, you know, I just marked a couple boxes out of, out of, you know, just for an example, cause everyone's different, but, you know, just work with me through here, uh, through the case studies is maybe the four hour person is, you know, whatever, 901, 916 for 10 K and, and, and 15 K. And the three hour person is 736 for 5K, 744 for 10K, and 756 for 15K. Hey, Mark, I want to add something, which is yes, important, please. Yeah. important to this group uh, as you go through these slides. And the, the 10T example you mentioned, because many of, uh, of the audience are uh, marathon trainers that follow Hansen's and uh, you know, different training programs. Yep. And when you uh, mentioned 10T, uh, many people would think the 10T uh, uh, program or plan in the Hansen's, you know, um, uh, training plan. Uh, in, in this case, it's different. This one, 10T, 15K is a racing time. It's actually you you use the all out, uh, you know, uh, the, the best you can do uh, for this time. Uh, in the Hansen's, uh, they actually advise, uh, you know, you run the 10T in the same marathon, the target go pace. Ah, uh, gotcha. Okay, sorry. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I okay. didn't know that. I didn't that. know. That. Okay. 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 Thanks. Thanks for thanks for clarifying that. I guess I, I guess one so one thing there is that's that's how I think about it a little bit differently from Hanson's. But uh, thank you, Lee, for for pointing that out because I didn't I don't want to confuse people. Uh, so the other thing is that maybe each of these person maybe each of these people will say you know hey my you know my last three marathons I'm looking at the gold for the for the four hour person maybe I I ran you know, three, th my last three marathons were 410. I, I want to try and, you know, get to four minutes or the three hour person says, Hey, my last three marathons were whatever, 332. Now I want to get to 324. You know, now I want to get to 324. That's fine. You know, look, uh, you know, love, love the dream. 
love the motivation, you know, where the slide is going is like, Hey, you know, if, you know, if you, if you, uh, if you, well, how I use the tables is that like, well, if you're going to run 359, if you want to run 359, which is 909 pace, then you're going to have to do a 10 T at, at 839. And by the way, 839 is faster than, you know, you can currently do a 10 K or even like probably a 5 K for the three hour person. Same thing. It's like, Hey, if you want to do a 10 T at a seven, you know, at 720, you know, right now that's, that's, you know, faster than your, your 5k pace, you know? So, uh, you know, when, you know, again, like one of the, one of the goals of these tables is you, it's an objective way that you can mark your dreams on a piece of paper and you can have a discussion with your coach to say, Hey, this is what I want to do. And then you and your coach can actually have an objective discussion and say, okay, you know, it's fine. It's what you want to do. Now let's talk about the possibilities and, and how you're going to get there. So part of the slide really is just trying, I'm trying to highlight how I use the tables and then maybe, you know, now let's inject in the coaching and talk about some possibilities. Again, everyone's different. So there's not one method, like this is not the only method, but this, you know, the tables are what you can use to actually have an objective conversation. So here's the possibilities is that um, what running to me means is that there's kind of two ends of the spectrum. There's a speed and a turnover end. And then at, at the other side, there's a strength and endurance end. And where I was going at the beginning of the call is that I tend to be more at the speed and the turnover end. But Lee is a much, much stronger runner than I am. And he has much, much more endurance than I do. So in a way, we're very complimentary as partners. Um, however, if someone, you know, and if you want to just go run a race, you know, hey, I, I want to go run a marathon in, in two months. And I just, you know, want to have a good time. And I want to enjoy myself. I want to get my medal. All good. You know, like you're, you're fine. But if someone, you know, go think back to that slide that I showed, whatever, three or four slides ago, where someone says, you know what, I, I want a little bit more. I want a little bit more. I, 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 I either want a PR or I want to be top hundred in this race. Like I want to run this certain time. Okay. You know, if you care that much, then, then, you know, that's a good thing. That means that this sport is something that's really, really important to you, you know? And, but, but again, let's, let's use the tables to figure out how you're going to get there. Because if you're, if you're going to get there, my, the, what I'm kind of candidly trying to politely say is that between the strength side and sorry, between the strength and endurance side of the equation and the turnover and speed side of the equation is you can't neglect one of, the, you can't neglect one. There's, there's, you're going to have to probably work on both of them. So where I'm going is, for example, like this four-hour marathoner, same tables as the prior slide is if this person wants to run 359, which is 909, they're probably going to have to do the 10T in 839, which means that if, you know, if, if their current ability is only whatever, 841 or 901, you know, at, at, at this other, at this high, at this lower VDOT level, you know, they're going to have to work on their turnover. They're going to have to, they're going to have to probably spend some time, get their 5k speed up and then pour it into the 10k speed, you know, and then they'll, they're going to have to extend it to the tempo. So this, this kind of goes back to what I was saying about, that's why I, I think that people should develop a feel for what they're doing out there, you know, for the pace, either on the intervals or the tempo is you know, you want to be able to, you want to be able to feel that turnover. You want to be able to know kind of where you are and what you're doing. Um, because this is where the progression is going to go. Um, I won't, you know, say the same things for the three hour person, because you guys can read the tables, but it's the same thing is that like, this person wants to do a 10 T at seven twenty. you know, that's faster than he or she can, can currently do it. You know, there's, they're going to have to, they're going to have to not only work on their strength and if they want to PR and, and get to the blue dot blue boxes, they're probably not going to only 
have to work on their strength and endurance and do the same cycle over and over. Um, they're going to have to work on their turnover. The cycle might take a little bit more time, you know, because again, like it takes, my experience says that it takes more time to go down a VDOT level to the, to the, to, you know, down than it does to the right. Um, and again, this is just a, another way that, that, you know, we can use the tables to help ourselves and have a discussion with our coach. So um, what I'm really trying to highlight, you know, I'm not trying to formulate a, a training plan for everyone here or, or, or anyone here. Like what I'm trying to do is, Hey, I, I personally believe in these tables. I, um, I use them to coach my athletes. Um, I use them to coach myself. Um, you, you know, it's something to consider, you know, you can look at them, you can, you can use them to map your current marathon times, current, whatever training times you can use them to figure out your current ability. Um, you could put your dream boxes on there or, or the goals that you want to achieve. And then you can have a conversation with your coach, you know, um, about maybe how to get there. And, uh, you know, again, I think that, I think that Lee uses a similar method, you know, and when, you know, in, in his coaching service. So, um, Lee, feel, feel free to share your thoughts, but, it, um, I'm just, I'm just trying to share how I use the tables. No, I just, um, um, uh, skip the service part. I just quick question uh, on the turnover because uh, when, when you mentioned the increased turnover, do you mean uh, cadence or other things? Uh, because I want to ask here, so people can have more. Clear. Sure. So, so good question. It's it's more it's more the cadence, meaning meaning what? So let's take the four hour marathoner for example. Is what that means to me is, um, hey, if you If you want to, if you want to go, if, if, if at the 10 K level, you want to go down from 901 to 849, I'm just, I'm just reading straight off the table. You're probably going to have to work on your, you know, you're going to have to work on your 5k speed to get your 5k turnover to, for example, you know, 841 in just in order to get your 10 K dime down to 849. Like you're, the 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 way i think to get your the way to improve your longer distance speed is to do pieces do a lot of pieces of shorter work at a faster tempo faster cadence um and then if you can take those small pieces that are done at a at a you know smaller smaller distances that are done at a faster cadence you can start to put them together and then over time you should be able to progress to a you know a faster time at that longer at that longer distance if that makes sense yes um if i can if i may uh, i i probably want to translate uh, in, in um, a training plan point of view uh, is uh, Please. The, the intervals uh, helps a lot and um, maybe it's not just about uh, uh, cadence, maybe the running form and, and, and all things like that too. And also accumulation of um, uh, a time plus the easy miles can increase your aerobic power. And uh, the lactate the threshold the training at uh, five Ks, at, at like uh, three, three, three miles, right? Those intervals. Correct. Okay. What I'm oh, right. sorry. If you increase Sorry. that uh, uh, pace uh, on, on your interval and uh, week by week, and uh, we can actually project uh, people's half marathon or full marathon, you know, to, to increase. Right. The other thing I would say that to add on to your point is that if you're, you know, if you're, for example, like whatever this 15, 15 minute 10 K person, um, if you're, if you're, you know, if the person is, this is the wrong word, but if, if, if the person is forced to be trained at a, at a, at a higher speed, you know, for shorter pieces of, of distance to exactly what you said, ideally that form changes and the, the running form becomes more efficient because you, you're almost, you're almost, you almost have to evolve to be more efficient in order to be able to, you know, do that turnover, you know, run that form at a quicker speed, even if it's just for a very, very, very short distance. Right, uh, another uh, takeaway, I think um, uh, from this table for the burn running uh, club members or the uh, or the run marathon runners is that many people follow the Hansen's um, 
plan. In the last uh, four weeks, they have a 10T, you know, I, I can remember every single plan. You know, you got the 10 mile tempo run for consecutively three weeks uh, until the week before uh, the marathon race. And at that time, you warm up like 1.5 miles and around 10 T have 1.5 miles uh, cool down. And just remember, for example, on this a four hour case, 909, but uh, many people, they, uh, they run 909, for example, the same pace as the marathon pace, or maybe 10 seconds faster. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then they, 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 they will think they can run the same pace in the marathon. So that is, um, in many cases, not true. You know, people start to uh, lose pace, drop. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because uh, if you are well rested and uh, if you are uh, fresh and you don't have uh, such a, you don't have a, a big, uh, you know, warm up uh, miles of fatigue built into your leg, you probably can run this uh, 10 T very well. And then you want to translate this uh, to your full marathon pace is, is not realistic, but right. at least, if you add the 20 seconds, in this case, uh, if you run that uh, 10T, uh, 840, you plus the 30 seconds, almost 30 seconds, right? And then, and that's a, that's a more realistic goal. Correct. That's, uh, you know, this, that's how I, that's how I use the tables. That's how I tend to look at it. All right, go ahead. All right. So, sorry, let's keep going. So, uh, quick takeaways is um, know your current, a bit, like, what people shouldn't be doing is, is, is working out faster than their current ability. Like if you work out faster than your current ability, you're just going to get sore. You're not going to be able to do as many workouts. It's, you know, no one wins. Just train at your current ability. Uh, believe in the training process. Um, this, you know, the, the, the last bullet I want to spend some time on is that I, I've read the burn running website where it said race with your head and then with your heart to exactly what Lee just said. That's, that's how I think you can use the tables with your coach is to say, okay, what was on, you know, what was the pace for the 10 T, you know, and then use the same line. You know, if you ran the 10 T, uh, two weeks before, and then look at the marathon pace on that line. Um, the marathon, I think this goes back to what Ryan Hall said is that, you know, it's, it's all of you out there. You know, like, you know, it's a little, there's a little bit of patience in, for example, the first 10 K and, you know, it, when you hit the wall at 20 miles, that's when, you know, it's going to take, you know, some mental courage and, and, um, you know, mental, mental fortitude just to kind of push through, you know, but if you, again, if you, if you, if you, if you, if you, if you start out too fast, then you're probably going to blow up and you're going to fall off. But if you can keep yourself fresh and you can stay patient, and th again, this is how I use the tables uh, for my athletes. If you if if you can if you can run if you can look at the line, use that marathon pace on the same line that you did the ten t on, and just stay under that ceiling for the first ten k, you know, and then extend it out through twenty, and then you know, ideally, what you've done on race week is you've kind of visualized, look, the last 10 K is really going to be hard. Like I'm going to be hurting. Um, you know, but, but again, like my friends are going to be there. I want to do this, you know, like I'm committed to doing something like this. You know, if you can put all of those pieces together, that's, that's how I approach racing. And that's, that's how I approach it for my athletes as well. So, uh, Lee, I don't know if you want to add anything onto that. Uh, no, all oh, good. Just go ahead. Just... Okay. All right. So, um, quick slide here is uh, we can quickly move on to Q and A's. Hey, when you when you set a crazy goal and you make you make progress to it or you get a breakthrough, you know that feels good. You know, like like your goal shouldn't be set too low. They should be you know they should be high. You know, um, they should be realistic, and you know you could work with your coach to figure out how long they're going to take. But you know when you're making progress to them that feels good. And that's what this sport is all about. Um, last quick slide. And this is how I coach myself and I coach my athletes is that, so what I, what I do is um, I try not to sign up for too many races. This is just, this happens to be my personal style is I say like, look, I want to focus on the, tr on, on the training cycle 
and I'm just going to kind of, you know, call it do a couple races to, to get myself uh, maybe to measure progress or, you know, get some data, you know, get some good data points, et cetera. Um, there's always like one championship race that's going to be at the end. But I think what happens sometimes is that, you know, if someone says, Hey, I, I want to do six world or six, you know, world majors, whatever, six marathons in three years, you know, one, that's a lot of running. Second is sometimes what happens is that if you're running two marathons a year, it's like, Hey, I ran a spring marathon. I took three weeks to recover, you know, and then I rebuilt base for eight to 10 weeks, you know, and then I did my whatever 10 or 12 week cycle, whether it's Hanson's or whatever, you know, then, you know, pretty quickly you're at race day. And if you, if you think back to that, you know, whatever that, that prior slide where maybe some, some, some marathoners are stuck, you know, again, going back to the age, that's where it's hard is that, you know, sometimes the training cycle takes more time and, you know, if you're killing off three weeks of recovery with every, with every, you know, with every two marathons, um, and then you're, you have to rebuild base. Like you're really, you're, you're, you're sometimes you're putting yourself in a point where you can't make as much progress. So what you could do as an alternative is say like, look, I'm going to run, you know, I'm going to focus on my spring marathon. Um, I have a fall marathon like that I'm not going to take it seriously. I'm just going to go, you know, I'm, I'm going to go tempo it. I'm going to go race it lightly. You know, I want to get my ring. I, I want to get my star. You know, I, I, you know, I paid a lot of money to get into this. You know, I got, you know, I got through in the lottery, whatever, like, you know, go, go enjoy the reward, but don't go all in. You know, you can always say, Hey, like, look, I'm going to race my spring races harder. My fall races easier. I'm just kind of giving a hypothetical example. Um, because what I want to do is I want to reduce the recovery time from the fall marathon. I, I don't want to have to rebuild as much base. I want to have, to, I want to spend more time on, um, on the training curve. Uh, so that's the first bullet. Second thing is, you know, training is kind of like a progression. Like if you're, if you're 20, you know, then, you know, maybe, well, the better way to say it is that, there's a, there's a progression out there called Macmillan, which I've looked at, you know, which kind of means, Hey, if you want to run 10 K then run six by one mile, uh, one week. And then two weeks later run like four by one mile and then two miles at the same pace. And then two weeks later run two by two mile and then two by one mile at the same pace. And then two weeks later run three by two mile at the same pace. And if you can pull all that off, then, that will eventually be your 10 K time. Like there's the meaning there's, there's a progression that, that I tend to follow, which has worked for, for some of the people that I've worked, well, works for me and it's worked for some of the other people that I've worked with. Um, so that's the other thing to keep in mind is that, you know, there is a progression. And if you don't, if, if you're either not doing, if there's not enough training time in the cycle, or you're not starting out at the right paces or, or the right volume, then you're not going to be able to achieve that progress. Uh, the, the last thing I'll say, I'm trying to speed through this so we can, we can get to Q and a is that um, I tend to work on multiple gears. So like, you know, I'll, I don't just what you, in my mind, what, what someone does not want to be is a one speed runner. Like, Hey, I go run every, all my tempo runs at whatever, seven minute pace. Like I want to train I want to train a person's 5k gear. I want to train their 10 mile gear, even if it only goes three miles or four miles at the beginning of the cycle. And maybe I want to train a longer, or slower gear. It kind of depends on the person, but I tend to train um, a lot of different gears and then you'll, and then I'll extend the different, the, sorry, extend the dis distances and then ideally, if the training cycle is, is good enough, they'll all converge at the end. And then you can run that big 10 T, you know, as, as the example, and then kind of extend it out to the marathon pace, which is on the same level. Um, last thing I would just say is, you know, Hey, quantity, what, what's worked for me is quantity slower first and then quality faster and probably less reps later. And you know, what I would leave you with is especially at the shorter distances. Um, I, I put a, I put a YouTube video address in that you guys can watch on your own time, but like, that's something I did. This is something I did two years ago. There's no way that I could run this time right now. 
there's absolutely no way. Um, and that's, that's where like the takeaway here is that that's where I think people need to believe in the training process. It's like, what, look, you know, maybe I spent however many weeks, you know, trying to move through the V dot tables and go from, you know, whatever direction to wherever they're trying to go. Um, but I, I, you know, as a runner and as a coach, I believe that great things are possible and, you know, hopefully I can illustrate for that, you know, use my own experience to illustrate that for you and, and encourage others. So what I would leave you with is, you know, Hey, let's just summarize kind of what we talk about is if you're adjusting your life to accommodate your running, you know, I think you're a runner. Um, second is, as, as Lee said, and as, as I say too, the number one goal is to not get injured, you know, and, and also trying to develop a feel for the pacing in, in your legs and mind, which I, it, it, that's helpful for me. If someone hasn't tried to do that, give it a shot and see how it works for you. Um, third, train at your current ability, work with your coach. This is where the VDOT tables can help you have an objective conversation. You know, it's not, it's not second guessing. You can kind of, you know, put your own dots, put your own boxes on there and, and personalize it. Um, work in baby steps. Like, tr you know, don't try and make major, major, major training changes. Like it, it should all, it should, in my mind, it should always be a long series of very, very small baby steps, mostly so that you don't get injured, but also that just so that, you know, your body can just get adjusted to the training. And, you know, last things are really belief, you know, believe in the process, you know, believe that you can do it. And I think if, if anyone can do it, then great things are possible. So hopefully, hopefully if people believe that, um, you know, there's, there's, you know, this is your path. You can, you can do it. If you invest the time, if you, uh, you know, kind of, you know, use some of the knowledge maybe that, that I've shared here then again, work with your coach and maybe anything is possible. So let me, let me pause there. Yes. Um, thank you. Um, uh, Mark, great talk. And that's why you are you. Mark is uh, Mark and don't uh, participate in many uh, races, you know, and, but get the national champion. Uh, I just, uh, go around, uh, participate in too many, uh, races. <laughs> I enjoy. I, uh, you know, it's, Hey, like uh, there's, everyone's well what i would say is first of all i i do believe that lee first of all your your strength is clearly superior to mine there's no way that i can do what you can do um but you know the other thing is is that you know everyone's everyone's race plan agenda is a little bit different you know some people want to get the six stars some people you know want to pr uh but that's you know life sometimes is such that you can't have both you have to, you have to kind of figure out what you want. And, you know, maybe the harder one sometimes is just going to take more time, but that's, you know, maybe, maybe that's what's, maybe that's, you know, it, 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 it depends what your goals are. Every athlete is different. All right. Uh, I'm sharing a, a screen showing the VDOT tables in uh, Jack Daniels book. If you can see. Here, let me, uh, let me, let me stop sharing then. Yeah, perfect. Exactly. Okay. So um, I just uh, add on, you know, Mark has done a great job and uh, he probably used a, a self-customized table with the pace uh, on, on, on the same table. It's a, it's a good tool. Um, uh, Jake Daniel is the inventor of the VDOT. VDOT basically is an estimated uh, VO2 max uh, judged from a, a racing, a racing full-time race, full out, out uh, race time um uh, on the different distance so for example uh, i just want to add something you know uh, to mark's um you know talk here it's a good tool to estimate uh, your your racing time based on a different different distance uh performance for example if you run a half marathon you never run a marathon but uh, if you want to uh, break three for example you want to run a three hour marathon and then you need to uh, have a race of half marathon to run uh, about a 125 or 126 between here and there. So you weigh that uh, is about between uh, 53 to 54. With that has a unit of uh, milliliter uh, oxygen per kilogram of your body. You know, it, it's basically um, 
uh, VO2 max measure. And it's a little bit different from the Garmin watch uh, estimation, which is uh, usually more exaggerated. You know, in my case, I, I match pretty, I have a pretty uh, flat table. Maybe Mark can talk about uh, if you have, uh, for example, my PR time for half marathon is a 119, you know, some seconds. And my, my full marathon PR time is 244, you know, uh, 40 something. So it's, it's, it's uh, projected really well. You know, it's almost flat. So my yep. peak, peak V dot is a 59. And right now, a year, maybe five years later, I'm at the 58 to 57. I, I keep running uh, 248, 249. In last of Boston, I run 247 on a hilly course. But I haven't run a half marathon uh, lately. But if I do, uh, if I'm uh, all out, if it's uh, you know a, a nice weather and flat, I probably will run uh, 120, but not not a PR, but uh, 120. And then if you want to run a mile, you know, compared to this, 509 is very hard for me. So the way I, I'm saying I'm lacking uh, speed, but the burn like Bob or some people, you know, they are really fast at a shorter distance. They can run really fast. Yeah. Uh, up can run really sub five, maybe five thirty, some a four something, you know, for one mile, and I probably cannot even run a five fifteen or five twenty. So I have a curve that's uh, towards uh, more endurance, but I, I'm lacking speed. So Mark's, if I get uh, Mark's point, uh, he he would uh, suggest me if he 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 were to you know he he's my coach, he will suggest me to run intervals like a mile, or two miles, three miles and uh, run um, faster at the lower, lower, you know, uh, smaller distance. And then I can get improvement on my V dot number and push the curve down. And so that uh, I can actually run uh, faster marathon. So that's the one approach, one takeaway from uh, Mark. Yeah, that's, and again, that's one approach. It, it, it's, it's different for everyone. Um, but again, you know, we can, we can use the tables just to kind of have a starting conversation about what someone wants to do and and what is possible. Right, uh, another approach um, uh, would be uh, focus on your uh, strengths. You know, you can focus on your uh, uh, weakness or you can focus on your strengths. If you just run a marathon, if you have a better endurance, you can run longer distance, run marathon pace or lactate. You run, um, you push for endurance so you can get better and better and more run economy at the half marathon or full marathon or mm -hmm. that's another approach and uh, people like us i, I would say uh, mark um, mark is one year older than his uh, big brother and <laughs> he tends to get injured if we run too fast so uh, i try to get rid of um, uh, many uh, faster workout like uh, 200 400 from my athletes in my in my coaching you know um, class and you know, we focus on maybe one mile two miles three miles lactate so it's not that uh, it's more effective. Actually, the running shorter distance is probably more effective, but it also has more risk. Correct. So of injury. Correct. Right? You, you use more power and your ankle, your joint, you know, you have more impact. So, and people have, like us have more time to recover. So we got to find a good balance on, on, on those things. Uh, but the marathon pace in general is not a high, highly demanding on your body. You know, marathon pace is actually relatively uh, comfortably hard. It's hard, but not uh, like uh, you cannot sustain for, you know, you can sustain that for two, three, three to four hours. So, right. It's different than sauce. Agree with everything you said. And, and I think what we both agree on, Lee, is that the number one rule is, is, to, not, is to not get injured. Yep. All right. Um, I, we welcome uh, more questions. You can ask uh, direct, directly to Mark. But before that, I can ask uh, two questions. One is about uh, easy miles, your weekly mileage, and second on the uh, on the running form. You know how do you uh, improve your running form? We all see you are running, you know, like a deer. <laughs> so two questions on the on the mileage and the base. You know how much do you think sure. uh, marathon that we should build for the easy miles? So I, uh, both of those are are good questions. Um, so on the mileage, uh, mileage mileage varies for everyone. Uh, what happens to, to work for me is um, if I want to be, if I want to be quote unquote serious, um, I'm probably running at least 60 miles a week, you know, when the training cycle starts. Um, 
even for your and, uh, 800 uh, you even, know, 10k even even for uh, well yeah for the 800 or or for the 10k for sure for the 800 maybe it'll drop down to like 50 or something but it's still over 50 um and the to your you know to your other point the base mileage there would probably be something like six or 700 miles meaning what that means is hey i'm jogging whatever 50 60 miles a week for like 12 14 weeks you know whatever the math is before i even do when i say jogging what that means is no hard workouts like i'm literally just out there jogging whatever nine eight minute miles just to get the base in like when you're in my in my view when you're running base you're really not doing workout what you're what you're doing is you're just you know you're you're kind of just establishing your your base but again this is this is for some you know this is what i do and this is for someone who wants to pr you know if you're if you're doing more races a year than that then maybe your base is shorter uh but then your your training cycle is 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 different as well and uh pace, how do you control your easy do you consider the just by feel or is a pace or is a heart rate it's it's really by feel so like my easy days are very easy like i i run on the dirt or i run on you know run the grass like you know nine or even 10 minute miles um you know all what i'm when i'm running easy on my easy days what i'm really focused on is like hey um i've got to do a hard workout tomorrow like i i got to make i have to make sure i'm trying to do two things one is i want to make sure i'm recovered from the prior hard day um and second is i i want to make sure that i'm well rested for the next day and you know i tend to do three hard workouts a week um which is a lot so my easy days tend to be really easy cuz all i'm just doing is uh just recovering and i guess to some some extent I'm trying to strengthen my slower twitch muscles as well. So I don't look at the pace. I don't look at the heart rate. I just go completely by feel. And, you know, it's it's going to be what it's going to be. I noticed you don't even wear a watch. You probably just manually input your log. Right? I, I do input the log. I get, the, I get flack from people like this uh, uh, all the time. As I say, you know, people tell me, hey, your, your easy days are just so slow. Like, what's going on? Uh, the other thing I would say that, that I actually forgot to put in the slides is that uh, what Jack what Jack Daniels tends to say is like, hey, there's there tends to be a ratio between your weekly mileage and what your long run limit should be, and how much you know interval distance you can do, and how much maybe even tempo distance you could do, et cetera. So. Like my easy days are nine minutes, or sorry, my, nine miles, sometimes nine or 10 minutes. Uh, but the other thing is that, you know, if I'm running 60 miles a week, the math says, hey, my, my easy days have to be that long, you know, in order to facilitate my fast days to be, um, to, to, to have the volume that I want to do. So it's, it, it's kind of like a big math equation, to be honest with you, is, hey, I, I need to run. I need to run enough volume on a weekly basis and do do enough easy mileage in order to accomplish the hard workouts that I want to do weekly. I have that number. It's uh, usually 80, 20, 80% 80 easy and 20%. I calculated the most of the training plans on the market. <laughs> gotcha. 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 You, you know, you're a step ahead. Of, you're a step ahead of me. So 60 miles, you have, you probably have, uh, you know, uh, uh, 12 miles accumulated the hard workout, you know, something yeah. like that. And the question on the form, do you uh, watch your running form in your easy days and uh, why? You know, or so is it I, easy, you know, you don't really focus on form. Uh, so it's a good question. I'll, I'll come clean. Is that, so I actually form matters to me a lot. That's that's kind of why I made the comment about hey if you know if if I'm doing a hard workout and my form is breaking down, uh, then the workout is done. Like I you know first of all that's a good way to not get injured, and second of all is you know if if your form is breaking down, that probably means that you know the the workout maybe is a little bit too much. So um, I do watch my form on my easy days. Like again, I I run most of it on the Kenyatta dirt, which is just just dirt. And I, uh, 
so on my forum, I'll, I'll, I'll geek out on you a little bit is that um, I tend to land on my forefoot. Like I really, you know, I really, really try and focus on not being a heel strike, uh, a heel striker. Like I, I tend, I, I really want to focus on landing on the ball on my feet. Um, and, um, you know, my, uh, if, if you watch the video that I, that I included, like most people would say that my lay cadence is really high. Like my, my form is very, um, I, it's very, um, uh, facilitated to the track and the grass. Like I, I have a problem running on the roads and trails, trail runs, like, forget it. Like I'll never, ever be a trail runner just because I, like I, uh, I'm on the ground a very short amount of time and I'm pressing off really, really hard. So it, uh, it's, it's, it, it tends to be very efficient. It's good for shorter distances. Um, but Lee, I actually think your, your form is, is better for marathons and better for longer distances than, than mine is. No kidding. Oh, you, you are our model. We actually, we do pay for you and uh, as a, a model example <laughs> for, for us. I, you know, this, for whatever reason, I, I kind of, you know, the, the form should mirror, you know, kind of whatever the, the, the cadence and, you know, I try and. In mobile, we like to do the opposite. Sorry. No, no worries. No worries. I'm trying to play your video. I'm going to share your, uh, your 800, uh, video in the end. Okay. Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> That'll be fun. Go ahead. The form and how do you improve oh. your running form? Because you, you run like, um. You just have so much power, so much spring in your foot and leg and also the whole body. And people uh, talk about, uh, you know, push your core. You know, what, what, what kind of feeling is that? You know, how, how do you suggest uh, like four hour, three hour marathon runner, you know, use their core? You know, some people say, hey, you don't have to use your core if you're a slower runner, just jogger. And, but I, I, I also tend to think a better form can uh, prevent uh, injuries, even yours, if you are a slower runner. Yeah, it's, you know, see, so I have, you know, that's a better question for Jing, Coach Jing, to be honest with you, because like my form is good on the track, it's good on the grass, but it, it probably maxes out at the 10K. Like what I'm doing is when I'm running is what I'm doing is I'm swinging my body from side to side. Um my legs are going out really, really high. And then what I'm doing is I'm stepping off the ground. Uh, and, you know, again, like the track of the grass, like, you know, I'm wearing spikes. So like I, you know, my time on the ground, my foot contact time is probably, probably, is probably very, very short. Um, however, I wouldn't recommend that for a marathoner. So it's hard for me to answer that question because I, I kind of don't know. Uh, it's good for people to run an uh, interval, you know, that, that form, at yeah. least. Yeah. Or like one yeah. mile, two mile, you know, and, you know, three miles, it's, it's good. Yeah. And it's hard to uh, maintain that form for for a full marathon, even for the elite. I think they probably jump, uh, the, the gravity, the center of gravity is lower than yours. You, you mm -hmm. tend to uh, jump more high, get more flying time. Uh, because of your nature, right? It's a 10K, not a full marathon pace. Exactly. Exactly. Right. All right. We got five more minutes. If uh, we welcome more questions, anyone? Oh, there's a question. How do you do strength training to improve speed? Uh, Kathy was asking. Strength training. Right. Meaning, so it can like, mean... Uh, not running, maybe I, I get it. My get is uh, anything that you do without running, you know, oh. cross training or you know, a gym work or do some squat or something like uh, that. I do, you know, so I ride my bike. Um, I mean, during COVID, I was like riding my bike every day, you know, for 45 minutes in, in Redwood Shores. Um, I should do more strength training, but I, I, I don't. I kind of, <laughs> I kind of lazy myself out of it. Uh, but there's, I mean, for like running wise, it's, uh, I run on grass a lot, which, which helps my, which helps my strength. Um, and I do do longer, slower tempos, but, um, if you're not including running stuff or biking stuff, 
right there's no there's nothing i can there's nothing i do for for strength so in short uh, like our national championship age group does not do much train strength training <laughs> i don't do much either <laughs> <But> <laughs> I often use that uh, to justify myself. I'm it, lazy. Yeah, we're on, the, we're on the same page. I keep telling uh, people, you get, you do your strength training while you are running, especially on your slow runs, on your easy runs. Yes. Watch your form and uh, make you spongy, you know, make your core is, you know, more form. And don't just uh, chat and forget, uh, you know, your, your form. Uh, people just lose their form when they chat, when they run. And it's like... Uh, it's like a walk, faster walk, you know, the running form. Not I agree. Like running. I agree with that. Don't don't be don't be sloppy. You know, you can you can joke with your friends and you know run with people and stuff like that. But you have to but you have to maintain your form, especially on the easy days, because I think it, I think that is going to add strength. Right. That's like eighty uh, percent uh, or ninety percent of the time, you know, for you to uh, to uh, to do that. And how important for stretching? I don't see you stretching a lot. There's a question in the chat stretching after uh i don't yeah my i'm not a model for i i don't even really warm down that much i'm trying to figure that i'm trying to improve myself there um yeah i don't i'll, I'll come clean i don't stretch that much like i do i, I will do like those leg swing things you know kind of like by the by the fence if you've seen me do that at at not coverly much. before the intervals but uh you know, i I don't really, I don't really stretch that much. Yeah, you, you probably do a, a, a little stride or something as a, you know, <laughs> as a stretch. A couple, a right. couple, yeah. Another question, if you are not hitting the 5K, 10K half marathon pace on that table, that, does this mean your marathon goal is not reachable? It just means it's going to take more time. Like I, I look at running as kind of like baking a cake, meaning you know, like if you want the cake to turn out, you can't say, Hey, I'm going to use half the number of eggs and double the flour and, and only cook it for 20 minutes instead of 40 minutes. It means it's still possible, but you know, if you're not tracking and you're running out of time, then, you know, same thing is like, don't, you know, don't go try and run something that you're not ready to run. Cause you're probably just going to, you're, you're probably just going to blow up. It, it doesn't mean that your goal isn't reachable it generally just means it's going to take more time, you know, maybe than, than the upcoming race. I want to add something. Some people have a very strong, slow uh, uh, twitch uh, fiber muscles, and they are very, very good on endurance. You know, I, I actually heard uh, Tony from uh, uh, New York, and he told me if he can run 10T, he can run the same speed for a marathon. I also know some uh, people uh, who run the archers, uh, they can they can run the Boston Marathon the the same same pace back and forth twice on the same day you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, either way they can only run you know a little bit uh, like three o something three o one and but if they just run round one they still cannot break three so they basically can can run a same uh, pace for a very very long if they cannot just run higher pace even for a half marathon so yeah. Depend on the people's uh, muscle type, you know, and some people just have a very, very good endurance. They probably don't have a speed for lower, you know, distance, mm -hmm. but they can run higher. So that uh, the answer is uh, depends. You know, some people can can actually hit the VDA table uh, on the marathon, you know, distance, but not on the lower one. Yeah. So, so to your point, everyone's curve is different. Like, I mean, I can, I even have a slide where I can show you mine if you're interested to see it, but. Your curve and my curve are are kind of like kind of like this. That's that's why I say that you are you and I are complementary. Is what right. you're good at is different than what I'm good at, and you know wh wh where my strengths are are different than where your strengths are. Another question: What do you think most essential to recover from injury besides increasing um, uh, treating load slowly? Probably just you know don't start too soon. Here, you know, to the person's point, increase the training load slowly, um, and you know, uh, and and you know, maybe like just maybe just go back to redoing your base period. Like when I, meaning when I say redo your base period, like no hard workouts. Like there's no shame in just jogging for you know whatever six or eight weeks, uh, right. just to get your just to get your fitness back. Like if that's what it's going to take in order for you to not get injured again. I mean, hey, good news is 
that it's only going to take six to eight weeks. You know, all you have to do is go jog it. And then, you know, if your injury is done, then, then you can move on. What you, you know, what you don't want to be is in this, uh, whatever repetitive period where you're, you're getting hurt like once a month, you know, and it just keeps going and going and going. All right. Sheila asked question. The measurement uh, with that table is, um, is it just two weeks prior to race? I, I only use that just because that's, that's by practice, that's tended to work for me and, and, and my athletes, but it, I wouldn't call it a hard and fast rule. Like, again, that's, um, like I, I, uh, going that, going back to that McMillan progression example, like that's, um, it's, 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 it, that's, that's a data point that's tended to work. It's, um, I'm not saying it's an absolute, right. you know, rule. Sometimes uh, for marathoners, I, 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 based on the data I gathered for many uh, race races, even for Jay, myself, and a uh, half marathon uh, tune-up race four weeks before the, 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 the race, for example, the Santa Rosa before Berlin or Chicago, or uh, some will say rock and roll before CM, you know, it's, it's a pretty good predictor, you know, for... It's like a four to six weeks apart, mm -hmm. I mean, but that's for longer distance. And next question, what are the, some of your favorite workouts for 8K, 10K? So for 10K, um, I'm, I'm laughing at this because I'm training for the 10K right now. Is, so like uh, a, my standard template for my 10K interval workout would be like eight by 400 at some pace, um, say 80 like a 12 lap tempo at like 85 in the middle. And then I'll run some 200s at like 75. So again, I'm, I'm trying to emphasize the gears. I want to run 10 K of volume in the interval session uh, because I'm focused on the 10 K um, and I'm varying the distances and, and varying the rest. So it, uh, I mean, that's kind of my starting template, but again, that, that that's at a certain point in time and ideally over the training cycle that's evolving. Like maybe the, maybe the tempo will shorten. I'll do more 400s, you know, at like a faster speed or with less rest, less 200s, that sort of thing. All right. I'm going to share, uh, you know, uh, Mark's uh, racing, maybe just two minutes because he, he actually ran 203 or 202. So it's going to be short as a concluding, you know, uh, note of this talk. I'm going to hit on the plate. That's it, of what big wireless does. They charge you a lot. To the crowd already are some of these athletes. Assigned lane one, he's a fixture at the Drake Relays Master 800, an Iowa State grad. You're okay, right? middle so, distance yeah, runner, hey, can Lance you mute it for, for, for 20 seconds and I'll introduce it? From... So uh, while, while we're getting to the start line, what I would share with you here is this was, this was probably one of the greatest moments in my life after I was 50. You know, this is a race that I really focused on, um, super long training cycle. Um, I believe that I could do it. Like I sent it to my college coach and he, he watched the video, you know, which you're just about to see. And his comment was, wow. Like I looked in your eyes during that race and like all he said was, I, I just saw the conviction that you had. So like, this was just something that I was just mentally locked on. This was something that I wanted to do. Uh, so, you know, sorry to delay you Lee, but, but that's why I say like, I think great things are possible, but they also, you know, at our age, they just, they take a little bit longer. Uh, and, but it also depends. It also depends, you know, kind of like where your head is and where your goals are and what you want to do as an athlete. Let's start. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Again, here are the men, 50 to 54. The American record is the world record, an incredible 158.65. I don't believe that extraordinary mark is in jeopardy today, but we'll see how the competition unfolds. 
That's me in black at the front. Our largest 800 meter field so far. I can have a beer. Watching you run. <laughs> That's Mark Wynn from the West Valley Track Club out to the early big lead here in the first 250 meters as he approaches the home stretch. A widening gap between he and the remainder of the field. Siriano, the three time all competitor, steps off. 63 seconds unofficially the split for Ewan. A star studded field. The heat taking its toll, but it's not slowing down Ewan as he heads to the back stretch. By a big margin. No competition. For those viewing at home, it's not possible to keep anyone in the frame with Ewan. He is running so well. Less than 200 to go. And into the home stretch, there's no coming back here. Mark Ewan from the West Valley Track Club. Give him a hand as he continues to press. He hasn't slowed a step from the gun. A terrific performance will be an even split, if not negative. An incredible negative split. 204 unofficially. We await the official time. Go well, three something. So Lee, if I can say Two one three, thing, yeah. If I can say one thing, so in a way, this, so in a way, this is amazing for a couple reasons. Is that one, I never ran it in practice, but second is, in a way, that's kind of how I approach marathon racing for my athletes. So what I mean is that, like the last six hundred was at four flat pace. Like that is insane. Like when I was even, you know, I was, I, even though I practiced a long time for that, like I, I never ran a one 600 at, at four flat, you know, like in, in one thirty as opposed to, you know, running that in a race. But the other thing is that how I approach marathon racing for my athletes is that, Hey, like you're not going to run, like, don't go do like a 24 mile long run or a 25 mile long run. Like don't try and run the race like there's a I think you know and and you know at least share your experience but in in my experience with 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 how I train my athletes like there's an element of belief it's like look we're going to cap your long run at whatever 20 or maybe 21 or 22 miles but we're going to work on the pacing and that's where the, the mental side comes in is that like on race day, you just have to be ready to go and you have to, you know, you have to be able to run this, you know, to run the tempo in the way, in the manner that I kind of are laid out er earlier, which is patient in the first 10 K, you know, and then do some work through 20. And then, you know, just as the burn saying says like, Hey, the last 10 K is going to take courage belief and fortitude and just running with your heart and Lee, you know, Lee I don't know if you you know use I don't know if that's your experience for your athletes as well but like where I'm going is that that's why racing sometimes is special is that there's an element of belief about hey I'm being asked to do this in a race and I've never ever done it in practice I, I don't know maybe it's short short distance maybe but uh, for marathon you cannot outrun your training basically exactly exactly Over that's ex uh, that's exactly what i'm trying to say is you know in in a sense what you're trying to what you're trying to do i think is run something better in on race day than than anything you've run in practice previously is is where i'm going yeah all right uh time is uh, 6:41 you know today we really thank uh, mark for showing up and give us a very good talk and covering so many things and the fact that he's our USC national champion, you know, makes us uh, really proud. And yeah, he sometimes wear our burn hat. <laughs> uh, well, uh, he's not uh, running that hard, you know. Well, he runs hard, and he has uh, no shirt and nothing on, on, <laughs> on his head. <laughs>
<laughs> on the easy days, we wish you to uh, use our our uh, cap, you know, our and uh, our burn T-shirt or shirt, and uh, you can have one for free if you want. I will uh, give you one. So uh, thank you very much for coming here to give us to share your experience with us. It's proud, and uh, I wish you sometimes uh, run Boston with me. And you have to be cute first. Let's yeah, I, I will have to be cute. Hey, I would love to do that with you. You know, let's let's make that a uh, I'll, I'll make that a bucket list item. I you know let's let's hold uh, hands at the finish line. But uh, just, hey, uh, I you you know the other thing is I I've had a great time with Burn. Everyone I've met has just been super friendly. And going back to the beginning is I, you know, a lot of friendships been, it's, it's been great. Um, if you share the slides, my, my, you know, if people have questions that haven't been answered, my WeChat ID is in there. You can send me a note or we can have a chat group. Um, hey, thank you for everyone for, for thank listening. Uh, I had a great time. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. And uh, everyone have a good night and thank you. And thank you, Bern, for su su sponsoring and supporting this talk. And I wish you have a very nice, uh, night. Okay. Thank Goodbye. you all. Thank okay. you, Lee. Bye. 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 Mm -hmm. Bye.